the first world war truly a savage and brutal war dominated by the technological advances the biplane the tank and the machine gun ruled the battlefield the war to end all wars was almost over and Germany was on the retreat on the 11th of November 1918 the leaders of both sides held a meeting in the railway carriage of Supreme Allied Commander Ferdinand Foch. An armistice was signed at 6 a.m. and a ceasefire would be in effect five hours later. Many events had contributed to the eventual downfall of Germany. The involvement of US troops didn't ease Germany's burdens. There were strikes and demonstrations in major German cities. The British naval blockade of German ports meant that many people were starving. In October 1918, the senior commander in the German army, Erich Ludendorff, resigned, and the navy mutinied. On the 9th of November, Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated, which caused anarchy in Germany. After the armistice was signed, the so-called Big Three came together and decided what to do with Germany. The Big Three included Georges Clemenceau of France, David Lloyd George of Britain, and Woodrow Wilson of the USA. These were the main political powers involved. The northeast corner of France was completely destroyed. They had lost over 1.4 million men. The French people wanted revenge so that Germany could never invade again. Britain had lost 750,000 men. The public wanted Germany to suffer. But the British Prime Minister didn't want Germany to suffer to the same extent as the British public. He was afraid of the rise of communism in Germany. But to share these views with the public would have been political suicide and he would have been voted out in the next election. The United States of America wanted to leave European affairs as quickly as possible. Woodrow Wilson wanted America to concentrate on itself rather than Europe. He wanted to prevent another world war by maintaining and creating the League of Nations. He also encouraged countries to reduce their arms. He knew Britain and France wanted utter revenge against Germany and it would be hard to argue. He believed Germany should be punished not so severe like Britain and France wanted. The treaty was signed at the Versailles Palace near Paris and the final signing ceremony was at the Hall of Mirrors, a venue which could accommodate hundreds of diplomats. The treaty was divided into a number of sections, territorial, military and general. A strip of land was taken away from Germany and given to newly independent Poland. This separated East Prussia from main Germany. France was given back the territories of Alsace and Lorraine. The treaty also gave France the right to mine coal in the Saar that would be placed on the League of Nations jurisdictions for 35 years. Germany was not allowed to station troops in the Rhineland to protect France from invasion and it became a demilitarized zone. Germany was very angry that Czechoslovakia and Poland contained large amount of German speakers. Germany was not allowed to unite with fellow German speakers Austria to prevent a super state. The territorial terms of the treaty was very harsh on Germany. All of our overseas colonies were taken away and put under League of Nations jurisdiction. Germany was no longer an empire. Before the First World War, the German army had never lost a war. She was proud, but the terms in the Treaty of Versailles would reduce it to a laughing stock. 
The army manpower was cut to 100,000. They were not allowed any tanks. The air force was disbanded and banned. They were only allowed six capital naval ships and no submarines. Allied troops will be stationed in the Rhineland for 15 years. Somebody had to pay for the damage done during the war and Germany was the perfect candidate. The Allies set the fee at 6.600 million pounds well beyond Germany's limit at their current financial state. The worst term of all was that Germany had to accept the war guilt clause meaning they had full responsibility for starting the war. These terms were very harsh and left a bitter feeling in the hearts of ordinary Germans. Most German soldiers thought the army could have fought on and defeated the Allies. They felt betrayed by the politicians they called the November criminals. Ferdinand Foch famously said, This is not peace, it is an armistice for 20 years. He wished the terms on Germany were much harder.